My name is uh, Danny Matamba. Uh, he does the same. My name is Archie. I'm Ginger. Finley. Uh, my name is Tadra Chowdhury and I'm here to speak about my London Marathon journey. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling pretty well prepared. The last few weeks and months have been a bit tough, but it's just the process that you have to go through. How do you know Tadra? Um, I think the first couple interactions we made was through house forms uh, tournaments. So the football tournaments between Willow and Fenton. Um, I met him before year seven in the opening day and we're in the line, he was in the same form as me and we're talking about birthdays and this guy was like, oh yeah, my birthday's on August 2nd as well. So uh, yeah, that's basically how I met him. Um, well, I've known Tadra for, for a few years now. Uh, it all started when we used to play football at a local football pitch uh, and then we got to know each other through school and then later socialised through Xbox. I met Tajwa Chalatari in William Ellis. Um, I don't really know when we first associated. I remember our friendship really kindled from year 10 onwards when he began joining our Xbox parties more and more and he really reinvented my life. Give one word to describe Tajwa. Um... Tajwa is resilient. He always gets back up. <laughs> <laughs> when life gave Tadwell lemons, he made lemonade. Motivated. I'd say... Ego. Yeah. Pride. Pride. I say pride. Okay. <laughs> put that in, put that in as well. Okay. Yeah, I'd say prideful. Athletic. I'd, I'd say I'm a bit careless at points. Because uh, sometimes I just don't know where the limit is with what I'm doing. So I might push myself too far or I just ignore the implications. But it can be a good or bad thing because it, I am pushing myself at the end of the day. What's your thoughts on him doing the London Marathon as one of the youngest ever? I think it's pretty cool. It's like a cool thing to be able to brag about after you've done it. Like I was the youngest ever to do it. And I think it's very motivational that he's doing it. I always knew that he liked running. Um, and I guess, I don't know, I'm happy for him. I mean, it is a proper achievement to be able to do such a challenging activity. Like personally, I wouldn't be able to do it myself, but I'm proud of him. It's impressive um, because to do it at such a young age, when people could have been training for multiple years, it's actually quite nice. Um, you've got some people who are doing nothing with their lives at this age. Maybe they're called Jacob or not. And, and some people like Tadjoa are really like going out there, they're pushing themselves to their boundaries and uh, they're actually quite impressive and they're quite inspiring to anyone who's maybe around the same age because you see someone doing that, you think, oh, I can do that if they can do it. And so, you know, it's impressive. Since when did he care about this interview? Name something good about Tadjoa. His likability. I think Tadjoa finds it quite easy to get on with people a lot of the time. I don't really know people that dislike Tadjoa, like Eve, like, I don't go up to someone and someone says, oh, I like Tadjoa, I don't like him or I hate him or something. So I think it's a good quality to have when you know, everyone around you seems to have like quite a good opinion on you. Oh, one good thing. Um... He's very useful at uh, creating video ideas, which we never actually go and record. So, you know, like his, his ideas are, they're useful. I like that he sticks by his morals. I think that's a good thing about him. Um, good thing about Tajwa, um, he sticks to a routine and he's quite motivated when it comes to health and fitness. Name something bad about me. Uh, he's a very, very stubborn person. You know, um, you can never, never win an argument with him. It just sometimes Tadra, he can be a bit over the top. He, he's a bit, you know, cuckoo up in the head. But that, that gives us a sense of unpredictability, and sometimes you need that in your life. Um, you never know what you might do next. 
uh, one day he might turn up, he might be bold, or he might have blonde highlights. It's really what makes him cool. If I'd, I'll say, uh, I think a bad thing is the fact that he likes to embarrass people, especially his friends in public. That's quite another. Um, he's a very loud person. So when I'm with him in public, it's very, very embarrassing because he's especially loud when it comes to times where you're supposed to be quiet and he doesn't care about anyone else's like personal space or anything like that. So when we're on the bus, he's just talking at the top of his voice, like talking about things that shouldn't be talked about in public. So yeah, he doesn't know when to be quiet. Name a moment or memory of Taj Rock. Uh, a moment. I'd say when he got sent by Finley's voicemail and he tried to call him after Finley's media exam and he started speaking saying yeah actually how was the exam how did it go and he got set because it was a voicemail that was a great moment I enjoyed that a lot pause name a moment or a memory of Tajwa okay um in year 10 um, during the summertime, we did a ghost chili challenge and essentially we just each had a ghost chili and saw you could tolerate it the best and we all had some and then Tajwa really needed something to drink because he was dying so he ran to the shops and got some milk and just poured it all over himself and it looked a bit weird but it was a very funny moment and right after he had a bit we just destroyed the milk yeah that was quite funny to see him look like he got just in the face <laughs> Well, uh, we were walking into sixth form at lunch one time and there was a certain girl who walked past him and uh, she goes, My stinky friend! And gives him a hug. It, it, was, a, <laughs> it was a very fun time. <laughs> so the reason why I'm running in the London Marathon is because ever since I was in year seven to eight, uh, I was always running and I went through a difficult period of time where I was struggling and running kind of got me through it so I've always had in the back of my mind that I'd always do the London Marathon and also I'm running for the British Heart Foundation because it's something that runs in my family and something that I've had to do regularly because I had to go to checkups and it has always like influenced my life. What do I think about Tajwa's story? Um, I think it's quite impressive. I think when you, everyone goes through your hard points in life, right? And it's about how you overcome it that really defines you as a person. And the way Taj was overcome that kind of like, that regret or maybe the, the kind of actions or stuff that's happened to him that's really affected who he is now is um, quite, you know, it's impressive to show, to show people that even when you are down, you can get back up and you can go even further than you thought you was possible in the first place. And at the end of the day, if you keep pushing yourself down, you never will reach the heights you want to reach. And Tajwa didn't keep pushing himself down. He kept climbing, kept climbing, and now he is where he is. And for everyone else to look at him is quite inspirational. And we should all be very, you know, lucky to appreciate that he's still here with us and that he's doing what he's doing now. How much do you know about my journey and what do you think? To be fair, I don't know that much about him. Um, like, he's a very, very enclosed person about himself but I've seen him training at lunch times shadow boxing you know he, he's done he's done a lot and you know he is a man who runs um, how much do you know about his journey and what do you think uh, I know quite a bit from what he's told me but obviously I don't know the personal stuff but I think it's pretty good I think it's very like admirable what he's doing 
And I think a lot of people should take, you know, stuff from what he does and apply that to their lives. I think it'll be very helpful. He's gone through highs and lows and he's, uh, well, to come to this, the place he is right now, he's done very well for himself. And um, he's definitely a person who a lot of people would aspire to be like when it comes to the work and efforts he's put into be where he is now. The journey has been, it's been tough, uh, but I think it's also been exciting at the same time. Uh, my friends and family have made that easier and although they do like to annoy me and piss me off sometimes, I do appreciate uh, everything that they've done uh, to help me throughout my entire journey. What motivates you? Something that motivates me is just seeing where I started from. I was a kid who struggled. I was a kid who struggled mentally and uh, I wasn't really open about it. I like to keep my cards close to my chest and I think at one point I hit a really low point in life. Uh, I have this which has a date on it, October 2018 and it was something that I wrote down uh, at my lowest point where I just didn't want to deal with anything and I look back on it every time and it kind of it kind of pushes me to uh, believe uh, where I started from and that I can go further. I mean, he suffered from mental health in the past, uh, but he's never really spoken out about it to a large group of people. But, you know, running, it's, it's given him something to do instead of thinking about all of those, all of those thoughts. What are your opinions on Tyler and how he struggled mentally? Um, I think your mind is almost a barrier to yourself sometimes. And if you let that barrier stay in the way, uh, you can never really go beyond it. And so, to for Tadjoy, he's he must have pushed beyond that barrier and got to where he is now. And I really respect that because the mind is so complex, it's so difficult to understand. And Tadjoy has really like allowed himself to be better than that. He's pushed beyond that. He's a marathon runner at the age of 18, and you know. At the end of the day, I gotta respect that. How did you deal with mental health? Uh, it was a long process, and you have to find that kind of level of acceptance of who you are and the direction you want to go in, because it won't always be like happiness. You experience things that will put you down, so it's kind of like you have to accept who you are, because uh, that is kind of like the best direction you can go in. What was the major turning point? I think the major turning point was uh, kind of when I realised that what I was doing is for me and that I need to kind of put myself in my own sort of area and focus on myself but then also be considerate of the people around me uh, because a lot of the time I thought I was alone but I then came to the realisation that there were all these people around me, my family and friends that were there to support me as well. Uh, on the past, he had a, I know he said he had a lot of stuff going on when he was about like around year 10, year 8 to year 10. But at the time I didn't really know, like I didn't notice a lot of the stuff. But he told me after and it's quite like... It's interesting to see how like someone can hide what they're going through, like you won't notice. But it's good because he's come out strong and obviously now he's doing this. So it shows like a big turnaround in his life. Um, well, I personally wouldn't know how he feels because I haven't gone through, I haven't gone through the same struggles as him. But, um, He's not a very open person when it comes to his mental, like, how he feels.
healing mentally, so I don't know a lot about his mental struggles or things like that. But I'd say he's doing all right. I dealt with it when I kind of accepted uh, who I was and the direction I wanted to go in because uh, I felt like I needed to find out who I was and what I really wanted to accomplish and stopped kind of looking at things in a negative way and looked at it more positively. Do you think he's ready? Uh, yeah, that's one thing I know for sure about him. I think he's been training and he's definitely putting the work, so I think he's ready for this marathon. I'm going to say no. Stop recording. Oh, I hope so. But either way, it doesn't really affect me, so... Do you think he's ready? Yeah, I, I think he. I think he's ready. Do you think he's ready? Um, well, Tadra has shown over the last few years that he is really ready for most things that come his way, and so he's clearly been training for this for a long time. He's got the motivation. He's got the reasoning. So why? We're stopping him. I believe that he's got this completely. You need to stop doing that. I got that all on the video, you doing that. Yeah, well, me and you got pornos. Do you think you're ready? Yeah, I think I'm pretty much ready. It's 6 a.m. and just gotten up and I'm just getting ready and preparing for race day. It's very tiring and I don't know how I feel, so we'll see. I'm about to head to my start line to so see what happened in it. That's me. I don't know what's going to happen. I was waiting at the start and it was so peaceful and it was just beautiful seeing all these people line up and it was I was ready. I was ready to go for this run. I just stood there watching as the time ticked down. And before I knew it, the race was on the way. Okay, done. Let's go. Feeling it in my knee. Still going. I'm like mile eight now. I think I don't know. Still going good. Let's go. I couldn't believe it. I got injured at mile four. Yes, somebody behind me had tripped up and fell over, meaning they clattered into my right leg and I rolled it and most people know when you roll your ankle it is a very bad injury and it was hurting my knee was hurting my ankle was hurting uh, but i continued to go on i pressed forward and i got a little bit of motivation on the way by a couple people oh he's there he's there Go on, lad, go on. <laughs> oh, my oh, my boy. Yeah. Hey, that's our boy, you know, that's our boy. Oh, God, that's our guy. Oh, yeah. Throughout the course till mile 12.5, where you see the beautiful sights, you see Kylie Sark, the boat, 
you see the iconic tower bridge which was amazing the people there everyone on throughout this whole course really was amazing to see but I continued going I kept running I kept going on and on and on and on but then I hit the wall at mile 19 and both my legs felt like they were going to rip so I was forced to take a break I have to stop for a bit. My knee's fucked. I was about to just pull it there, so I have to stop and walk for a bit. I'm kind of pissed off, but I'm having fun. I've hit the wall. I got over it, but it's more about I need to complete the race rather than do it quickly. So yeah. Touch war. Touch war. Touch Keep going, man. As I looked on at the red street where the finish line was, I kept I kept pushing myself, kept going forward, knowing that the end is literally right there in front of me. And when I crossed that line it was the most amazing feeling I could ever can't even put into words what I felt. Final day, just done it. 
I've done it. I'm insane. I, won't, I put my hamstring halfway through, but I continued. So, so final advice is going to be just rent in your victory or your achievement. Like I have to. That was me. That's the days of advice done, but I imagine more content ends up. So yeah. Just think. Uh, oh, I was tired, my legs went twice, both of them. Come on, cut, stand out, stand outside there, stand outside there. Come on. Well done, bro. Well done, lads. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Now, after my long journey, I I ran into my friends again. I went to celebrate with family, and in the end, the experience was a great experience. If you want to do the London Marathon, have thinking of doing the London Marathon, I would do it a hundred percent. Um, because the emotion and the event itself was just an amazing experience something that i couldn't sp speak more highly of and i guess the one takeaway that you can get from this is the key message of not giving up i think uh, me speaking about some of like how i felt in my past uh that was a big step for me and all it all that shows is that I didn't give up and I kept going which is exactly like how my marathon went I didn't give up I kept going so I guess that's the key message and if one at least one person can see this and feel inspired I that just makes my day so I also leave links in the description phone numbers in the descriptions for things that you need to use to talk to people but yeah so is that it it's at the end of my, let's say, journey in its whole. Am I done? Am I finished? Nope, just getting started. I want to do so many more things, boxing, football related things, more YouTube videos. And I want to get revenge uh, again. I want to redo my London Marathon or do redo a marathon to show that I can do better. And I think that in itself is enough reason to keep going and keep on my journey. So, yeah, I'm not done yet. I, like, I literally can't take it off. It's, it's stuck. Like, I can't. Are you ready to see your boy run? My name is Danny. Danny Mutoka. <laughs> I'm Danny. I was gonna say Paki, but I can't do that. <laughs> oh, yes, okay. Me and Tajwa had this lovely exploration of Parliament Hill when me and him didn't have lessons, and we walked around that whole school. And so That's a girl school. When you said Parliament Hill, I thought you meant Paki. Parliament Hill, because it was very negative. <laughs> my name is Tadja Chaudhry and I'm here to talk about my London Marathon experience. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.
Like, comment, subscribe, everything. Thank you so much. Whew. It's over, man. It's finally over.